Hello everybody and welcome to my review of the BMW R1200 RS. Hello everyone, welcome to my review of the BMW R1200 RS. I've had this bike for a year now and thought that this was a good time to do a video. It's powered by an 1170cc boxer engine which produces 125 horsepower and 125 newton meters of torque, which in old money is 92 foot pounds. Yummy. The fuel tank holds 18 litres of fuel. Three seat heights are available. You can choose from 760 millimetres, 790 millimetres, or an 860 millimetre option. Mine has the 760 millimetre seat. It's equipped with Brembo front and rear brakes. This bike also has BMW's ESA system and features shaft drive. Luckily for me, this bike also came with a Akropovic, you try pronouncing it, rear silencer, which makes it sound rather fruity. I have fitted some extras at the rear a mud sling to protect the rear shock from stones and crud, on the engine some X head covers to help protection in case of a fall, and on the front to protect the engine case and avant garde, which I would say is essential, and also installed some bar risers just for that extra bit of comfort and relocated the sat nav. Sorry for the next bit. It's a bit self-indulgent. Cue the music. So I bought this bike last year to replace my Z1000SX. A uh, bit of a difference being that this is a Boxer and that was an inline four. If you watch one of my earlier videos when I rode an older air-cooled GS, I hated the Boxer engine, but didn't like the rocking and shaking from either side. I have to say on these water-cooled ones, whatever they've done, it doesn't shake so much from side to side. I mean, a lot of people do like that. I can live with it on this bike. I'm really converted to be honest with you. and. Um, as we go through the video, I'll explain my reasons why. I think the first thing to do is start it up so you can hear the exhaust. So let's just get down. So first thing getting on it, um, admittedly I have fitted bar risers, uh, which has brought the bras up. Uh, they've raised it up about 30 mil and brought them back about 21 mil. So they were kind of down here-ish. I mean, I wouldn't say it was uncomfortable, I just felt like I was being a little stretched. Quite an easy adjustable screen, you just literally pull it, two positions. Mirrors are adequate, they're not brilliant, but they're not bad. Once you play about with them, you can actually get quite a good vision to the rear. Seat-wise, very comfortable. Now, even though it weighs in at nearly 240 kilos, when you're on the move, it's actually quite easy. It, you know, you don't really feel the weight. It's really easy to ride at slow speed. I'm quite lucky in the fact that this bike is quite well spec. Someone spent a lot of money on options. It's got cruise control, keyless. It's got the um, quick shifter. Now, quick shifter can be a little clunky on the lower gears. I tend to use it once I'm above second. So this is really a, a sort of sports tourer, if you like. I think with the emphasis more on touring. If you put panniers on this bike, you quite comfortably could tour Europe on it, no problem at all. So let's start with the engine, it's 1170 Boxer, um, yeah it's a brilliant engine, uh, it is just so torquey from no revs, 
you can literally be in any gear and just twist the throttle and it will pull and it's just effortless if you're going to overtake a car and you're in second and you just bang it up third fourth by the time you're in fourth you're well exceeding the speed limit doesn't sound a lot on paper 125 horsepower but it's not the horsepower it's the torque it just pulls I mean, some people say they don't like the sound of a boxer. I mean, I'm lucky that I've got the Acroprovit can on there. I think with the standard can, it probably wouldn't sound as fruity. The suspension, we'll go on to that. It's electronic. Uh, it's brilliant. I mean, that's what convinced me to change. The handling on the Z1000s just felt a bit wallowy, really. Just not as good as it could have been. I, once I rode a bike with uh, the electronic suspension, it was just like... It's a no-brainer, I had to have one, and it is brilliant. At a touch of a button, I can set it on road mode, or I can put it on dynamic, or I can put it for me and luggage, or two people and luggage. No messing about with spanners to adjust the preload, it just does it for me. So far, it's been reliable. I am a bit worried about the cost of a rear shock if it ever fails. But as goes riding, the bike rides fantastic. Absolutely fantastically. Let's just do a bit of a pull here. A 70 just gets there so quickly and I've got to be honest I thought um, that things like cruise control and quick shifters were gimmicky or you know for the track only but I've got to be honest on road it's brilliant uh, especially like now in a 30 just flick it on you know you're not speeding and the quick shifter just it sounds silly, but when you're going to do an overtake, you just haven't got to think about clutching. Out you come, and then just fire it up the quick shifter. Whilst you're still throttling on, it's brilliant. You're, you're passed in seconds. I mean, when you ride this bike, you find that you feel that you're in a safety bubble. Um, the suspension is so good at making the ride smooth. The engine is so torquey and powerful. The brakes are reassuringly good. It's a brilliant package, but that's not to say it's boring. It's far from it. I've ridden this more than any other bike I've ever owned, and uh, if it hadn't been for lockdown, I would have done a lot more. What are you doing? Probably would have done a lot more miles if it hadn't been for lockdown. love those clutches up just brilliant but this is one of those bikes that you can be whatever you want it to be it's brilliant at just plodding if you just want to plod along on a Sunday um, if you want to notch things up a bit and ride like a bit of a hooligan then this will take it there's nothing more fun than threading together a, a load of S-Bends on this bike and banging up and down that quick shifter using the engine braking it's it's great fun and uh, i genuinely never am left wanting with this bike i didn't want to like it i really didn't want to like it but once i rode one I, I think in my opinion it's a very underrated bike uh, and i know now it's outdated i know they've brought out the r1250 you know you've got the um, TFT dash and the 1250 uh, shift cam engine but don't dismiss the R1200 RS some people have complained about the dash on this bike and I must admit it is quite awkward to read um, I actually do like the fact we've still got a um, analog speedometer but there are three different screens you can have or styles as they're called so you can, I think it's style free from memory is the one it's just got basically a speedometer and not much else if you want to go that way. But once you train your eye to know where the information is, it's actually not that bad to read. Uh, it's just a bit bland and a bit boring. I think that's sort of one of my criticisms really of this bike. It's such a great bike and the dash really does let it down a little bit, I think. Um, other criticisms, I find the high beam, high and low um, button is quite awkward once again you've got to train yourself you just flick it with your finger but it's not it's not really that accessible for me uh, the indicator button doesn't feel very positive on mine again these are only minor niggles but they are niggles and 
also the uh, under seat storage space isn't the best they're my own real criticisms of this bike um, which to be honest with you I don't think is that bad oh yeah one other thing as well this is quite a well-known thing the center stands uh, get quite stone chipped to start to rust it started to happen on mine fuel economy wise it's an 18 litre tank on this um, and Believe it or not, it doesn't seem to matter how I ride this, it always seems to be around 50 to the gallon, which sort of puts you around a 200 mile or slightly over tank range, really, which I think for 1200 is impressive. For touring, perfect. If you can get 200 miles between fill ups, that's, that's good. And by that stage, you're going to want to have a leg stretch and a wee stop anyway, aren't you? So that's pretty good in my book. Like I said before as well, it is comfortable. I just opted for bar risers just to make it that little bit more comfortable. I didn't, I found the position wasn't like super stretching me, but I just felt like I was on a rack a little bit. Also fitted a, a bigger screen. I mean, mine had a non-standard screen on it when it came, uh, but I just put a slightly bigger screen on there just for a bit of wind protection. And again, that helps ease the fatigue it's genuinely quite a nice place to be sitting on this just riding now the great thing about this motor is it's just got the torque and power where you need it just ideal for road riding you don't have to scream the nuts off it and you can make progress it's just so suited to road riding it's there when you need it it makes overtaking a doddle I mean, don't get me wrong, it's no out and out sports bike. I think it's a hidden gem. I think these are very underrated. And I don't think you get one of these until you ride one of these. Just for that suspension underneath you, making everything all right. Not, it is, I hate to use the phrase, but it's a well banded about phrase, but magic carpet ride, that's what this bike gives you. It is just a brilliant package. You've got to take your hat off to BMW. Um, this bike is, in my opinion, a brilliant bike. Yes, I'm biased, because I've got one. But try one for yourself, see what you think. It might not be your cup of tea. So yes, I'm converted. I like BMWs. I never used to, but I like them now. Servicing wise, the servicing can be quite expensive. This bike's two years old um, and it was due its second year stroke 12,000 mile service. Lucky enough, I haven't quite done 12,000 miles yet. So the plugs, uh, air filter and valve clearances aren't due until 12,000 miles. They're, uh, they're mileage, not time based. So I had a service yesterday at a BMW dealer and it cost me 187 pounds which wasn't too bad, it's a bit annoying because I could have done it myself but this bike came with uh, extended warranty and part of that conditions that warranty is it has to be serviced at least by a dealer. So in closing this bike has been a brilliant bike, it's not let me down in the past year, it's been comfortable, it's been good on fuel, it's always put a smile on my face, it's just one of those bikes you get on and you feel like you can go anywhere. Would I change it? Only for another R1250. <laughs> uh, I guess I, I'm a bit of a fanboy now. Um, I do like the Boxer engine. I do like the RS. Uh, but this particular bike, I'm happy with it. It does everything I want it to do. Um, let me know if you've ridden one. What did you think? Um, or did you buy one? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I won't bore you too much. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. But as always, Thanks for watching, I do appreciate every view that I get. And uh, until the next time, ride safe, and I'll see you on the next one.